Hi guys, I thought I'd do a video since I haven't done one for a while and I've had a couple of people um, they seem to be having trouble playing the main lines and ones I've been recommending so say Open Sicilians and obviously they they are the best lines to play if you want to try get a, a decisive advantage but on the other hand you are also playing into your opponent's pet line and so he it is um, it's, mo it's most likely that he's going to know it a lot better than you do and so there is plus, pluses and uh, minuses for playing playing open Sicilians or mainline things and yeah because of this some uh, some viewers have been ha some viewers have been having some problems with it and so in this video I thought I'd start a new uh, series on just other other things you can try against as white against um, black responses to 1e4 so in this video I'm going to start off with the French so e4 e6 and okay so against the French d4 d5 I've suggested moves like knight c3 before and just playing the advanced so e5 I still think e5 is a good idea playing the advanced French knight c6, knight f3, queen b6 now the line I want to recommend here is bishop d3 and now this is a very sharp line for white to play he's uh, looking just to give up a pawn um, but get very fast development for it in return and um, yeah well B bishop d3 can be really dangerous for black and the line I'm going to show you is extremely dangerous extremely dangerous to black if he doesn't know what he's doing uh, which is often the case this line hasn't been played many times and it's a really good surprise weapon and I use this in my games because I'll to bishop d3, pawn takes, pawn takes. <clears throat> now bishop d7 has to be played. Note that if knight takes d4, this loses immediately because now after knight takes d4, queen takes d4, white is winning after bishop b5 check and the queen is lost on d4. Therefore black has to play bishop d7 first. Um, now he's preparing to take on d4 and is going to be no checks on b5. We just ignore the pawn, we just castle, allow black to take on d4, and now there's two ways that white can play here. The most common is to play knight takes d4, queen takes d4, knight c3, and this leads to the Barry Milner Gambit, which is also uh, is also a, a decent option for white, but black will be well prepared against this. It's uh, yeah, very, very common. And here black can either play a6 or the queen takes e5 and both lead to pretty sharp positions. However, this is not what I want to recommend. Of the knight takes d4, um, I, re I want to recommend this knight bd2 line instead. And I think this is really dangerous. And if you look in the database, there's not that many games that have been played with this line. And um, yeah, media, or you should find that um, when, you, when you play this line, your opponent should be out of theory already, and this is move nine. And as you'll sh as you shall see in the, these variations, um, the White well, can get a really aggressive attack very quickly. Now I, I did do a, a video on my old channel in this line, um, but in in that one I only covered some of the variations. This one's going to be a much updated video and some new ideas as well. Um, that I've been trying. Okay, so black has a couple of options here. You can play something like bishop c5, which is supposed to be on the main lines here, but it is a weird looking move to play, especially if you don't know what you're doing here. Bishop b5 is a pretty logical move uh, after knight takes f3. Um, there's also moves like just dropping the knight back to c6. Obviously, knight takes f3 is an option, or even just something like rook c8. I have, I've had rook c8 played against me a couple of times. This is an indication that black really doesn't know what he's doing, and rook c8 is pretty slow, and he can get black can get in a lot of trouble um, by playing this sort of move. And something like knight e7 could be played as well. Okay, so if black tries anything like rook c8 or or knight e7, just not not taking on f3 basically. 
then what we're going to do is we're going to take on d4, queen takes d4, knight to f3, and queen has to drop back anyway, so queen b6. And so we just force the queen, uh, the exchange on, on d4. Um, so here you can also see they take, knight takes, and now say knight e7. This also transposes back to the position we've looked at. Um, so yeah, knight, knight e7 can be played here, or something like rook c8. The reason rook c8 is not such a great move is now knight g5 is very dangerous. Already both these pawns are starting to look very weak and the queen's um, preparing to come to either f3 or h5 and then black's got some re really bad problems on, on his king's side to try to defend this position. Uh, so I'll give you... So say, say if they go g6, stopping, stopping white from taking on, uh, on h7 then now we can play something like queen f3, attacking the f7 pawn. So now knight to h6 needs to be played. Queen can come into f6, attacking the rook. Rook has to go to g8. Knight takes and oops. Now knight takes h7. Uh, this is a really nice move for uh, for white. I had a game in the Giga final UK Chess Challenge uh, in this exact position, and I won pretty uh, won pretty quickly. Uh, in, in this position. I think my opponent played bishop g7 now and the whole point of knight takes h7 is this idea of just going bishop g5 in this position which is just completely completely losing now for for black and this is just one variation where I demonstrate how how strong this line is for white. So immediately we're threatening checkmate on e7 so the most obvious choice would be just to take the queen. Here we can take back with check, and now it's three three squares for the king. Okay, obviously king f8 is probably the worst because now it's knight takes d7 check free piece. We win back the uh, the the queen, and this is just we're just a piece up now for nothing. So king f8 would be terrible, and if king. King uh, d8 and king e7 are pretty pretty similar. King d8 was going to play knight takes d5 check. Okay, now the king has to go back, and we can take pawn takes, take the knight, and once again we are a whole piece up. And after king e7, this is your other option for for black. Then we have knight takes again, double check, and now it's so like just king back. We can take the queen. Pawn takes, bishop takes knight, and once again we are uh, a piece up. So after bishop g5, the, the queen cannot be taken here. And so the only other way to defend this checkmate is playing something like queen queen to b4. And this, this is what my opponent played, this position, since now he's protecting the e7 square. But now I have a really nice sequence of moves. I just play a3. Kicking the queen once again. My queen still can't be ta can't be taken. He went queen c5, and I was went b4, and then he had to drop his queen all the way back to f8, still protecting uh, the e7 square. And now I just decided to simplify here. Just take on f8. Bishop takes queen. Pawn takes, and after this rook takes, I just took the uh, the knight h6, and I'm just a, a whole piece up here. So he he resigned after in this in this position. So that was a really nice uh, game that I had, that, which, which just goes to show this rook c8 moves really too slow. Uh, and after say that black doesn't have to play g6, um, or we'll say he goes knight g uh, knight e7 here. Already now queen f3 is uh, very dangerous for for black because now this f7 pawn is really hard to to defend and if they try something like h6 which is another another idea they can try we can go queen h5 attacking f7 and also pinning this pawn uh, to the rook so our knight can't be taken and <clears throat> if g6 we could even try just taking on taking on g6 pawn takes queen takes check and now uh Black's, Black's king's in a lot of trouble here. So after something like king d8, our knight's coming in, we're winning this rook. Um, 
<clears throat> we can play our bishop to e3. So once the king comes to c file, we can bring our rook to c file as well. And uh, yeah, black, black, black looks, looks in a lot of mess here. Okay, so rook c8 is obviously not a good, a good move. Um, bishop b5 is another alternative. This is a pretty logical choice. Obviously, as a French player myself, um, he, this bishop's always a really bad piece because of this pawn structure. It's block, it blocks in your uh, light square bishop, and therefore swapping off your bad bishop for white's good bishop makes a lot of sense here. And and also your uh, black black's actually a pawn up, so. He wants to try swap off pieces uh, as many as possible, going to an end game, and then he's going to actually be uh, better. But okay, so here we can play bishop e3, gain a tempo on the queen, queen to a6, so trying to force the exchange of bishops. That's okay. We could take queen takes and now knight d4. Once again, we are we're gaining another tempo on the queen, queen d7. We can bring our rook to c1. Not to say, so not knight e seven, knight b three. Preparing to go into uh, into c five. <clears throat> and after sitting on knight c six, we could even just play knight c five here and sack sack the pawn. And the point the point being is, if bishop takes bishop takes, black um, black's going to have a very hard time castling. Stay in this position. That's going to have a very hard time castling now because of the power of this dark square bishop. And yes, okay, we might lose another pawn on e5, but there shouldn't be too much of a problem. And after this taking on e5, we might even be able to play queen d4 here. And we're looking to take on uh, g7 at some point. And we're just going to double our rooks upon the c file and take, take advantage of the fact that black's Black's going to have trouble getting his other rook into the game, into the, to the c-file. Um, so bishop b5 is, is, is an okay move, but it does give white a very active position. Other options of black can try is something like knight c6 in this position. Knight c6 is a uh, pretty common option. It is quite a hard move to find. Because it doesn't really make much sense to go to take the pawn to go to retreat. Because it seems like you're just wasting um, valuable time in the opening, and especially when you can just take with check um, and then be rid of this knight. So just it is actually a pretty good move, but I'm not sure you'll will get played against you that often. But if you do get it, just go knight b3 here. So now we want to get really fast development. Bishop b3, rook c8. Now of knight e. G7, just like bishop e3, queen c7, so now black's attacking knight e5 pawn. We can play rook c1, uh, pitting the knight to the queen so they can't take on uh, on, e, in e, on e5. And now knight g6, and once again we have a very similar idea to, to before. We just want to play our knight into c5, and if bishops get, if the bishop takes, we can take. We sacked his pawn in e5, but now, once again, black cannot cast, so he's going to get himself in a lot of trouble here. And if they don't take, say they play something like uh, rook c8, we can go b4, we're to go b5, some a6, then we can go a4, and we try uh, force, force b5, yeah, force b5, and we can also play rook e1 and just. Uh, reinforce protection on uh, on c5 pawn also so that's uh, another way that can try and play play this position but as you can see here white's only a pawn down at the moment and he has a very uh, a, very, a very active position a lot of a lot of compensation for just one pawn so other ways black can play a something like bishop to c5, and this is supposed to be like one of the main the main variations. We play b4 here, which is uh, this is quite a nice idea. They take on a free check, takes and this position. This position could also be reached by uh, knight takes f3, knight takes f3, bishop c5, b4, and 
it's just, it's just uh, transposes. So now there's two ways that black can take this pawn. Either queen takes or bishop takes. Queen takes is better, bishop takes is not so good because of it allows uh, rook b1 here. The immediate threat of a3. So now the queen has to move out of this pin and now we can go a3 anyway. And the idea is now we black can't take this pawn because of rook a1 winning winning the bishop. And so the, well, the bishop's going to have to retreat, so back to e7. And now we can come in on the take, take on b7, get a pawn back, so we're only just the one pawn down now. But we have uh, control of this 7th rank, and uh, this is looking very very good for white. This knight's going to have a hard time getting into the game. If you go if you go as knight h6, you can always just take it with our bishop, and then black's going to have double pawns on the king's side. Um, so yeah, I think white, white's got a nice position here. This is why queen takes b4 is the better, is the better move. And now rook b1 immediately is not so great because of queen a4. It's quite a crafty move. Um, the idea of queen a4 is just to swap off queens basically. You know, we we take this pawn, they're gonna swap off queens, and they're now um, still a pawn up in in this sort of middle end game. So this is not exactly what we need to do, but this is still not that bad. We can play our knight into g5 at some point, but it's not as good as what, what we can get. Instead, we can just go queen e2 first. And after queen e2, now rook b1 is a threat. Um, we're targeting the b7 pawn. So black often plays something like b6 here. And now we can even go knight g5 and start invading the... Uh, <clears throat> the the black position. Okay, so we're already threatening to take on h7. We play our queen to f3 or queen to h5. And this pawn's also going to be weak, and it's hard to see. Uh, it's hard to see how blacks gonna gonna deal these these threats. You know, it's very similar to uh, the other the, the other lines we looked at. If h6 we queen h5, and stops our knight from being taken. Oops, so threatening f7, and if g6, we can then just sack on, on, on g6, takes, takes, and now the knight's going to be penetrating on f7, and this is also looking very, very dangerous for black as well. And if they play something like g6, once again we go queen f3, attacking f7 pawn, knight h6, Queen can come into f6. And now this is slightly different to before. I mean, what black can play is rook to f8 this time, but rook f8 is not really any, any better because now knight takes and we're actually hitting the rook as well. So something like rook g8 would have to be played. And here we can just take on. Well, we've even got, we've got tactics lined up here against this the weak knight. Uh, so we could take on e6 if you want, but I think taking on h7 is a little better. And here, we're, we're attacking this knight and save knight g4. Attacking our queen. We can just drop our queen back and then put our knight in on f6. Which is uh, going to be going to be pretty dangerous. So I'm wondering whether, queen, whether to play queen h4 here, queen f3 or queen g5. Um... Queen f3, maybe knight takes e5, but then knight f6 check is looking pretty strong. But then we're just giving away an unnecessary pawn, so maybe we just go queen g5, I guess. Protect this pawn, and now what I do like about queen g5 is if black does something like a nothing move here, if you say he just goes rook c8, and we're threatening just queen takes g4, queen takes g4, knight f6 check. And we are winning back the queen um, with an extra piece. So now, obviously, black's black's got to do something about this in this position. And you know, the best I can see is he's probably going to have to go bishop back to e7. And uh, white white's got a really nice position here. He's only a pawn down. Black isn't going to have a, isn't going to be able to castle. And White's position. White's going to get a very active position, especially once he starts kicking this knight of h3. This knight's already pretty short on squares. Um, 
So yeah, you know, I think white's a little better here. So other ways that black can play, he can also play something like just knight e7 immediately here. But yeah, all these lines are very similar. If, you, if they do this, you can just take, take, knight f3. The best way for the queen is to go back to b6. And here you can either be patient with bishop e3, queen c7, rook c1, knight c6, and now just something like a3. Uh, bishop e7, b4, a6. Um, well, this is one way to play. And after say, rook e1's reinforcing e5 pawn. When black castles, we can immediately start attacking attacking black's king, which is like queen c2. So attacking h7 pawn. And now of h6, we have quite a a nice idea here, we just go queen to d2 now and now we are targeting the h6 pawn and if black plays something once again like rook c8 just doing nothing really we can just take on h6 pawn takes h6 queen comes into h6 threatening checkmate on uh, on h7 and it's actually uh, pretty hard to deal with this threat and already <clears throat> already uh, Black's in a lot of trouble here. It's hard. All his pieces can't get it over to king side uh, fast enough. If he plays something like f5, trying to trying to block it, then we can just take on f6 on pass on. And now once again, this is a big threat. Queen to, queen h7 is checkmate, and so rook has to take on f6. Now queen h7 check, king f8. And now we have a mate in two from his positions. Queen h8 check. King has to go to f7. And now knight comes into g5 check mate. So, well, in this position, after g takes, queen takes, black is uh, completely lost. Um, so, yeah, his queen, his queen d2 move is quite quite crafty. Just aiming at his h6 pawn. And they place after queen c2, if they decide to go g6 now instead. Uh, they go g6 and we can play h4, which is a nice move because if, um, if there's ever any back rank threats, then uh, our king's always got an escape route. But also now we're threatening to go h5 and now just smash open on uh, on g6 and sack our bishop on g6. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, the black king's looking in a lot of trouble here. And once again, say we go to my rook c8, which doesn't look like such a bad move, because it's lining up the rook with the queen. Now the queen can drop back to b8, and then the, this pawn might be uh, on pre, and then the rook uh, could be threatening a discover attack on the queen. We just go h5 anyway, queen b8. So now something like knight takes b4 might be a, a real threat. So rook takes c2, but we're going to take on g6 anyway. We're threatening takes of check, and now they take. We can just take back our bishop. Actually, the best move here is f takes, uh, bishop takes, and the only continuation that, or well, the best continuation here is actually rook takes f3. And the sequence that follows this is what the computer found. It, this actually leads to a draw from this position. But this is extremely hard for black to find over the board. Uh, obviously, you think like, you know, knight takes e5, knight takes, knight, knight takes e5, knight takes b4. It's very uh, tempting because of this discovered attack. Um, I guess, well, obviously, knight takes e5 is not really helping. Then it's an opening a position for the bishop. So say they go knight takes b4. We can take on h7 check. King to h8, and now we can bring our queen in. Queen into g6, and already uh, bishop h6 is is a pretty big threat. And we're going to try and checkmate on on g7. And also, this knight's also this knight's also being attacked. So yeah, the best the best move here for black is to play rook takes f3. We can take with check. Can get us into the corner. King h8. Um, we don't actually take this rook, we go queen to 
g6 now. It's very double edged. And the idea is now we're going to play bishop h6, given the chance. Okay, now something like rook takes e3 is the best move. Rook takes e3. And now, I think it was knight takes e5. Was it now? Let's have a look. Yeah, knight takes knight takes e5. And then, yeah, this is perpetual. Queen takes, rook takes e5, queen c1 check, king h2, and then queen f4 check. Yeah, this is the perpetual I was talking about. Because after, say, king g1, um, black can never, black can never take on e5, because of, we have queen, queen g8 is checkmate. So they have to go for the perpetual here. King h2, queen back again. And this is, it. <coughs> sorry, this is, this is a draw. But this is very, very hard to see. This sort of position, as soon as you know you've taken here, I think Black will be thinking about taking on f3. And even though they do find this move, we take, bring our queen in. I don't think they'll be wanting to take on e3 as well, and then take on e5. It just yeah, it's, it's very, it's a very hard um, sequence of moves to find. So, so yeah, this is a. Uh, Pretty pretty good for white as well. I doubt your opponent would ever find this sequence. If they do, then they're a very, a very strong player. Um, but yeah, this pretty much get, brings us to the end of this video on this knight b d two gambit line. Um, it doesn't have a name, I don't think, because yeah, it's hardly ever played, and it's, yeah, it's a gr it'll be a great surprise weapon. I've won a couple of games in European World Championship events. Um, see, I, I I do highly recommend you try try this line, and um, let me know how you get on. If you do have any questions, please feel free to ask, and I'll try to get back to you guys shortly. Okay, guys, I'll see you next time.